Hello, it's Friday morning, and once again, once again, it's time for relaxing painting with Dyson Dungeons. Um, okay, well, <laughs> hello, everybody. Um, yes, there are things here to paint. Um, I'll explain that in a little while when I figure out if I want to paint anything or not, or if I just want to sit here and complain about how the uh, the weather is changing and and uh, you know it's getting cold and then it's warm and the air pressure changes and when you're old you can feel it in your bones. Okay, my grandparents used to say that. It's I'm just cleaning up a little bit of printing problem here. Anyway, um, yeah, the weather's changing. How do you know? I can feel it in my bones. Well, basically what that means is when the air pressure changes, that sometimes it just causes achiness, like in my fingers and um, the back of my shoulders. So I'm going to complain about being achy today. But before I do that... Um, You know what? Uh, does that does that mean that you start to smell when it's going to rain? Hmm. Maybe that's what that means, medicinal shy guy. Is that if it's about to rain, then you? That's a really good thing, though. Because if you smell when it's going to rain, you can just go out into the rain and wash it away. Right? I mean, that would be, that's pretty, that's pretty handy, actually. Um, I, I don't think I smell whether it's going to rain or not. Hmm. Yes, you're going to, uh, you're, you're going to hear the whims and whines of the elderly today. So, let me do a flip first. I'll move these guys out of the way. I wanted you to see that there was gray things here that might um, that might be painted gray because I primed them. Uh, but I need to flip something. I haven't flipped this in a long time. My special heads and tails paper. So I'm going to do that. This, this always used to land one way or the other because it's kind of curved, but we'll see. There's the tails. Yeah, this isn't a very good flipping thing, is it? No. Anyway, there. That was terrible. Just like Submarine Wednesday was terrible. It was, I don't know, I don't think it was that entertaining. I got a little bit of painting done. I painted the bottom of the mess deck you know, the different colors of the three different uh, cabins that go under, the compartments that go underneath it. And then I tried to fit the pieces together and one of them just doesn't, one of the bulkheads doesn't fit. And I played around with a file for a good long time. It probably bored everybody because it wasn't even on camera. Um, but uh, yeah, that was, that was a thing that, seems to happen with that old kit is that really important pieces that need to fit together because if not that entire section won't go into the hall um, so I played around with that for a while and then moved on to looking for pieces for the control deck and rummaged through three different boxes I have three submarine models I rummaged through all three of them trying to find some parts that weren't very 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 badly molded um, some of them were just almost totally unusable but I did find uh, usable parts for all of the control decks so um, what I'm gonna need to do though is a lot of them need sanding and filing in order to fit or just even to be presentable like some of the chairs have a lot of flashing around them and other ones have mold marks and things like that. So 
uh, that's probably what I'll be doing next week, Wednesday, is not so much painting, but uh, manipulating little plastic pieces so that they look sort of like what they're supposed to look like and they fit where they're supposed to go. Um, yeah, and then I'm, I probably will do off camera getting that one bulkhead to fit into the into the hull of the submarine. It just it absolutely has to go where it needs to go and it needs to fit well and it doesn't and it's I have no idea how long it's going to take but it'll probably be boring and I won't have anything interesting to talk about while I'm doing that. But what I have here today are some with these so you can see them they are you know fairly much alike. I thought I cleaned them up but I guess there are some spots on some of these where there's little like support strings or something. I'm going to just do that while I'm telling you what they are. Uh, we have a rosin printer as well as the uh, PLA printers that are behind me. And periodically, every once in a while, we print minifigs on those for two reasons. One is so that there's something interesting to paint. I mean, as much as I'm interesting as I paint, um, so that there's something interesting to paint and also that we have minifigs that can be used by our DM to try to kill us which happens with some frequency uh, to try to kill us in our D&D campaign. So I'm just looking here to see, you know, and, and when they come off of the, the rosin printer, it's not unusual uh, for them to, there be little support strings and things that uh, just need to be popped off. So these are dragon kin. Let's see if I can get one up close here and be in focus. You can tell the dragon kin because they have like dragon heads and tails like that and uh, and dragon feet. And there are there are five of them. And what the plan is at least it's the plan. We'll see how, how it's executed when it comes right down to it. We'll see how the execution goes. Is that well, there's, I think, five basic families of dragons. There's red, green, black, bronze, and blue. It's kind of the classic, the classic common uh, families of dragons. And so, coincidentally or not, I've got five dragon kin uh, minifigs here. And there are five, typically five families of dragon kin, of dragons. To which these can be kin. I'm just cleaning up the little little mold strings that just seem to appear everywhere. Um, yeah, so they will be. There will eventually. I'm planning at least that's the plan. Eventually, there will be a red. A blue, a green, a black, and a bronze dragon kin minifig. And I have decided that I'm going to mm -hmm. this part, this little bit here is really going to be annoying later.
I'm going to do the, the bronze one and the blue one. I'm going to start on those today. And why? Well, I didn't want to do red and green. It just sounded like, okay, that's going to be Christmassy. And I can be done later. Okay, and will be done later. But I thought I'd, I'd try to start with the with the bronze and the blue. Kind of the, the B theme. And I'm not, you know, like every time I paint something, I'm never really sure how it's going to turn out. You know, whether the colors I pick are, are going to work very well or not. Um, and so I keep reminding myself and the viewers that because these are just little minifigs and they're being painted, uh, if things turn out really badly, like if something just looks awful, uh, it, it's possible to just just put new primer on them and start over. And you lose a little detail, but that's one option. The other option is to just toss it and print another one. That's that's kind of a wasteful option, but it's it's something that can be done. So I'm just playing with the exacto knife here and cleaning up some little little s stringy bits of uh, the rosin that had uh, adhered to the the model. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to pick one of these kind of arbitrarily, I don't know, this one. Why this one? Because that's the one I picked up. Um, this one's going to be a bronze dragon. And this one, are they pretty much the same? No? Well, one's kind of a mirror image of the other. Oh, this has got all sorts of goo on it. Goo mean dude. Little more little old strings. Yeah, sometimes the more I look at these, the more there are. In terms of these these little bits that need to come off. Um, yeah, so this one's gonna be blue. And this one's gonna be bronze. I'm gonna do two of them at a time. Kind of, so that I can move back and forth as the paint is drying. But also, I have got two of these holder things. Um, and that lets me uh, hold two of them. So that's probably what I'll do, is I'll do two. Or what I'll do is I'll just mutter on about things, like I sometimes do, uh, without actually getting around to painting at all. That would be okay. And actually, I'm going to do that first. You might remember the Otiog. Remember this guy? Um, I got, you know, the purple slimy tongue and the teeth, and I played with speed paints for the first time. And it came out, you know, looking Otiog-y. And then I got the, uh, the toenails done. But I haven't painted the base. The base is scabby. So what I'm going to do first is put this on a holder. There's a couple of other touch-up things. One is um, there's little spikes up here on the top that I never painted, and I probably should do that. They just they just don't look right that way. I'm just going to paint them like dark gray or something just to get it out of the way. And then I'm going to paint the base neutral gray, which is a light gray color. And then I can use a black wash on it to make it look kind of splotchy. And the reason I'm doing the base on this before I start doing anything else is because the base, well, there's several reasons. Among the many reasons of why I'm going to do the base before I do anything else, one is that it needs to be done. And if I don't do it now, I might end up like forgetting about it. And then it's like, oh, well, I need to pull this out and get this done. Okay, so that's a thing that could happen. Uh, the other is that this, uh, this should be easier uh, to to paint then the dragon kin and I can get warmed up for painting a little bit you know kind of oh 
The other thing is that I'm going to have a short session today. I'm going to be finishing around noon. Um, and there's, you know, there's always reasons for that, but. The main reason is it's Friday. And, and even though I'm retired and one day is the same as the next, I can, I can still celebrate the end of the week by maybe cutting out early. We'll see how I feel. When I was thinking about the bronze dragon, I actually have bronze paint, which is a really nice color. But it's also very dark. Um, and so I'm thinking what I'll do when I paint the bronze dragon is actually paint it brass. And brass is a little bit lighter. And uh, it will let me maybe put a wash on it really light like a brown wash or even a gray wash or something we'll see how it looks but i think it would look better i think it'll look better um in brass than in bronze and then the armor i'm going to actually use the bronze on the armor so that the armor is darker than the uh than the dragonkin skin and I've got some gold paint and some copper paint, and I could use that for like highlights and things on the armor. You know, kind of like the armor has, um, I don't know, like decorative edging, kind of, and it's and around the shoulders, the same sort of thing, where it might be like, you see, it might be bronze, and then the little edges all around it could be um, could be gold you know because dragon can can be kind of fancy yep that is okay sorry I keep digressing because I keep finding these little bits like this right here at the base of whatever this is on the bottom of the armor that need to not be there Hmm. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. Um, I usually like to paint in, uh, the upper surfaces first and then paint up to them, which in this case would mean painting the armor um, first and then painting the dragon kin skin up to them. Um, well, we'll see how that goes. But first, but first the gray. Uh, here. I think they look pretty vicious, don't you? And then when I did the, I did the yellow speed paint on top of the green, because this is a really dark kind of look the mod the otiog is really dark and so what happened was the yellow kind of changed the base color a little bit and then the you know it seeped into the nooks and crannies and things in a very um well for the most part you know it, it highlighted things really well so the speed paint i think worked well on this better better than a wash would have uh, it's kind of a monochromatic beast. It isn't, there isn't much to it. It's just all gl globby looking, but it does have a vicious, vicious looking, nasty kind of rotting teeth now. And I actually, right along the top here, I mistakenly got a little bit of the speed paint onto the top of the teeth, but then I said, I really like the way that looks. And so I did that right there and a lot, right along the gum line. Kind of. Um, so I think it came out okay. What I need to do now, there's these little spikes on the top, these three little spikes that I just missed. I didn't paint them. Um, so I'm going to put some sort of paint on those. I think 
I don't know. Um, I might just paint them like a dark green, just just to put a just to get a color on them. I'm gonna just go ahead and do those first. Good grief! And then uh, I'm gonna paint the base of the Otiog. Yeah, thanks for the suggestion about using the speed paint on them. And then, then I use the the pearlescent paint. I come to kind of like those on the tongue to make it look like wet and slimy. And uh, there was a purple undercoat with kind of a light violet overcoat. White and then the yellow speed paint. I could do that, but then that requires me doing two things. <laughs> I'm lazy today. That's, a, that's really good advice, but um, I'm not going to take it. What I'm going to do is just paint them a dark color so that it doesn't look like they're not painted. Two different colors. So as I was saying, I might, I might be cutting this, this session short today. Because it's Friday. So I'm not really, all I'm really trying to do is make these things kind of like disappear. So it doesn't look like it's a piece of something I forgot to paint. And then I'm going to paint the base. I was thinking with these kind of like sucker things under here. I was sort of thinking about using a pearlescent paint on these bits as well to make them look slimy. I don't know. That might be something I'll do a little later. We'll, we'll see how it, how I feel. But I'm thinking that it, that it, they would look, maybe look a little better if they were if they were um, not necessarily glossy, but yucky. Or maybe I'll just leave them alone. I can't believe it. I'm using a little brush, trying to paint a tiny little bit of something. And I just get paint all over. All over, right? Now I've got a. Now I've got a spot. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes you just leave well enough alone or poorly enough alone. Uh, yeah, end of the semester or, or session. Good luck with that. I hope you don't do it for them, but that you are actually helpful. Um, thanks for popping in, though. I really appreciate it. And have a good weekend. Okay, I'm going to go back to this gray here. Wow, the speed paint is really water soluble. It came right off. Weird. Well, do you remember that? Let's paint the base and hopefully not make 
a hash of it, right? I'm gonna use a smaller brush to get up to the to the feet. And then I might pull out a larger brush to um, finish it off. Why is this paint not covering? Okay. No, I know what's happened. Okay. So this is a thing that happened. Um... We have all these little steel mixing balls, right? And I think that what happened was when Nicole was painting all of those street tiles, and maybe went through more than one bottle of this. But the, this paint, this paint is uh, mainly, has mainly been the vehicle and not the pigment. I'm going to have to give this a real thick shaking and stirring. should be better. Yeah, but it was kind of weird. Usually usually these these this paint um yeah this is much better. It's covering now. But I was dealing with solvent more than pigment there. This is turning out to be a little harder than I thought it would be because it's hard to reach in here. It's hard to get the light in there. Nothing is ever like as simple as it should be, it seems. I just need to whine today. Um, every once in a while, I need to go on to a, just a whine, you know, whining and complaining kind of thing. I haven't done that actually in a little while uh, in this stream. So today I'm going to do that. I'm going to complain about being achy because of the change in the weather. I'm going to complain about um, the paint not mixing well right away and needing to be stirred again. I'm going to complain about how hard it is to reach underneath the feet here. Do you have anything in particular? You just anybody uh, medicinal who any anything in particular you like uh, to hear a complaint about today? I'd be I'd be more than happy to do proxy whining for you. You know, especially if it's something you can't whine about yourself. You know, because of you know political pressure or. 
whatever whatever reason you might have to not be able to whine about it. And if you have anything like that, where you'd like to have like a proxy whiner, I can whine about this particular thing. The people near us, one of our neighbors, is having their driveway redone. And whatever equipment they're using, I mean, it's not even like 10 feet away or something. This is hundreds of feet away from us. Whatever they're using is sending vibrations through the ground and it's actually coming up through the stool that I'm sitting on in the workbench. Kind of a weird feeling. It's not, not real pleasant, really. And it's kind of a large driveway, so this is probably going to be going on for a while. The frequency, I'm sure, is so low that you can't hear it. It's just, it's so weird. The dogs aren't particularly fond of it either. There it goes again. It'd be a sighing day as well. Not just whining, but sighing. <gasps> I think I read somewhere it's probably, you know, one of those excuses like, why are you sighing? Sighing is good for you. It expels excess carbon dioxide or something. Kind of like, what is yawning all about? The same thing for sighing. So if I sigh, it's just like, it's probably just because I have carbon dioxide buildup and I need to move it out. We'll just, we'll just call it that. It's not a sign of frustration or, or anything like that. It's just, uh, it's just exchange of gases in my lungs. There we go. Okay, well, now I'm going to use a larger brush to uh, paint the rest of it because then it'll go faster. And hopefully I won't just get it and make a mess of things. Gravity still works. There we go. This is a, this is, by comparison with many of the other models, much larger and heavier. So it decided not to stay on the stand there. Okay, well, I'm going to just say that's a feature and not a bug. 
the um, speed paints really are very soluble. I noticed that when I tried to wipe off that little mistake I made up there when I was painting the pointy bits, that it uh, dissolved in the water. And the, some, some of it got onto the base here, and it's actually dissolving in the gray paint. So there are kind of yellow splotches. But that's okay. The base is supposed to look kind of mottled anyway, and I'm going to be putting a wash on it. And the wash isn't going to be even. It's just going to be splotted on. Um, so the yellow leaking through, I think that'll be just fine. I'll just say that that was what the intent was. Okay, so... No, it's gray paint on the Otiug, and then I'll be putting a black wash on it or a dark gray wash later. This brush is cleaned. The Super Train, it um, it was actually pretty terrible, and it was it was actually so terrible that I I think I'd like to watch the whole thing. I need to find out why. I, I need to find out the technical details about how they pulled that off, you know, because given given the difficulty in this country of trying to build a high-speed rail line. I think you're familiar with that. Um, because of just the issues of getting the right away for the, for the rails. Let's just say that Amtrak owns hardly any track in the country. Okay, it, own, it owns some of the, the track along the eastern seaboard where they run trains fairly often. Um, but most of it is owned by freight companies and Amtrak just leases it. And, and in fact, they have, the passenger trains have low priority if, the, if a freight train of the owner of the track wants to use the track. Well, the passenger train just needs to pull aside and if it's late, well, it's late. So when they talk about like a high speed rail line or something, there's always these right-of-way issues. How do you get the right-of-way to even build the rails? Much less, much less the effort it takes, the money and the effort it takes to uh, weld track and put down concrete ties and things like that. I'm using it, this brush wasn't coming clean in the water. So if you've got a super train, which is just a big passenger train, I'm really curious about how they managed to get the right-of-way uh, for the tracks, you know, so I have to I have to check that out. Um, yeah, it is. It's the logistics and the land ownership. I mean, if you can get that, then then you can build the tracks, I guess. You know, and if you can build those, then then you can run the train on it. But no. You can't, you can't get the right away. So I, that's, it requires a serious suspension of disbelief um, to believe that somebody was able to build a train that would go that fast across this country. You know, then you've got, I mean, just think about, they, they just don't cover that in the movie, I don't think, is like uh, street crossings. That is a big issue with high-speed trains, is you can't just have regular road-level crossings with little gates and things because things move too fast. So you either have to build overpasses or underpasses for all of the roads that you cross. Yep, and whose responsibility is that? You know, if you try to get the cities and municipalities and the government and things to fund that, so that you can make your own, you know, fortune, your own fortune uh, with your train? Or do you have to do that 
because you wouldn't need these overpasses and underpasses if it wasn't for your train. So I could see just that, those court battles, you know, about responsibility for uh, paying for, the, for that kind of uh, safety infrastructure. That could derail, huh? derail the entire project really quickly. So I'm real curious to see what, what kind of pull the, the owner of Super Train or the creator of Super Train had to be able to get bypass all of those sorts of things. Yes, it was essential. Analog would not have been good without that. You should come up with a couple yourself. I mean, you could say things like, um, the, loss, the lawsuit about the, um, Railroad crossing on Highway 16 kicked this project right in the caboose. You could say that. So why don't you? Hmm? Hmm? So, yeah, so the logistics and land ownership, all the right of way stuff, the responsibility for payment for uh, road crossings, you know, which all would have to be done in order to make this thing work. If that isn't covered, I don't, I don't know. I mean, you might as well just watch like 2001 Space Odyssey and believe that 22 years ago, we would have been uh, having space stations with routine air service by Pan Am. You might as well believe that. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start working on a Dragonkin because I don't have any more excuses at the moment. And I'm going to start by, by painting some of the armor pieces and uh, shoulders and wristbands. I'm gonna be painting these bronze, and then eventually there's like edging on them, and I'm gonna highlight those in gold. And I'm just gonna paint a base coat of bronze on all of the armor bits, and then I can decide what kind of highlighting and um, Yeah, and an additional cleaning up that needs to be done. I can decide later what kind of highlighting needs to be done. And then... But at least I can say that I've done some painting. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's got a belt and a belt buckle. And a bunch of bags, you know, just anyway, I want to get some of this paint on here <clears throat> just to get just to get it started. Looks like there's kind of an undershirt kind of thing here. I don't know if you can see it, but. But under right between the, the neck and this, it looks like there's kind of a collar of some sort. Um, that should be painted as well. I'm not sure, given that this is a bronze dragon, I'm really not sure. The color to do that.
I'm going to start with this brush and see how it works. And again, I'm not, I'm taking a chance in making the bronze dragon actually brass because I think I might want to try to put a wash on the skin to bring out some of this like a little scaliness and highlights and stuff. And if I use the bronze paint and you'll see that as I start applying it here, it's, it's really quite dark. And I, I think because it's darker than the skin color is going to be that it will be a pretty good contrast. At least that's what I'm hoping. It's a really nice color. And I think it'll work well on the armor, especially if I get some gold highlights around the edges of some of these pieces. This is the part where you know, I'm doing this base coat with this fairly large brush. And later on, when I paint the detail, I'll use my head magnifiers and I'll see that what looked like good base coating was actually not these spots that are missed and unevenness and gone places where I didn't want it. It's always, it always happens uh, with, with my version of relaxing painting here. So I'm doing the armor first because the armor, you know, is raised up above the skin and I need to get, make sure that the paint goes down to that. And I find it personally easier to paint up to at the edge of the armor with the skin color than to paint down to it with the armor color. That doesn't guarantee it'll end up looking okay, but it's more likely than not that I will have um, fewer unpainted surfaces. So again, I'm doing this whole, I'm going to do all the armor in this bronze color. And after I see how it looks, then I can make some decisions about the embellishments. Like the, these little ridges on these shoulders and wrists and... Um, shin guards and with a really fine brush and a steady hand and I have the brush but not the hand but the two of them together I've had in the past a little bit of success at least in doing that kind of embellishment with the the edging of the armor and I would actually I'll be doing that before I do the skin color and I'm going to do it in gold just like I'm doing this in bronze, so that it contrasts with the brass of the dragon can what will be brass with a wash. Uh, do the ed the embellishments in gold so that they're brighter, lighter and brighter than the skin. But that, yeah. But back to Super Train, I think, you know, why not? Why not a, you know, a hugely luxurious Super Super Train as opposed to, say, a private yacht or something like that? So I'm, you know, I don't think that it's altogether dumb. Um, you're not, you know, it's not going to turn a profit. I don't think you have to do it as kind of a vanity project or something. I mean, you can't even turn a pro profit on selling tickets uh, on many of the Amtrak routes, right? 
So how would you do that on a super luxury train? But why not? But the, I think the real problem is just uh, <laughs> being able to use it at all. How do you, how do you get the right of way? Suppose if, you know, if you had a lot of money, maybe a private militia. Um, burned people out of their homes. I suppose there are ways you could pull it off, but... Way more difficult than, than they, they probably let on in the movie. There was another train thing. It was it was a, a TV series or a streaming series or something? It was some sort of apocalyptic winter uh, on the planet. You know, like the reverse of global warming. I don't know. Maybe they decarbonized too far or something. I'm not sure why, but everything got really cold, right? There was snow everywhere and glaciers were forming. And the only means of escape was this train that somebody built. And, and somehow or other, again, it's one of those, and how did this really happen kind of things, because you always have to suspend disbelief when you're doing something unbelievable, like running a high-speed train in the U.S. Um, so there was this gigantic high-speed train that just ran around uh, saving rich people from the ice. And the thing about that is, is again, how did, how did they manage to get the right-of-way for this thing? But even, even then, it's like, seriously, the world the world is now freezing, right? There's ice everywhere. How do they keep the tracks clear? You know, did they have a gigantic snowplow train? Maybe. But then, why didn't they just put that on the front of this... this uh, arc kind of train that was saving humanity? And of course, there were different categories on it. There was... You know, first class, second class, steerage. You couldn't go from a lower class to an upper class. It wasn't really clear. A whole lot of, you know, they always people worry, of, don't, when they do these things, they don't cover the logistics of it. Where do they get their food? See, so you're running this train, and you gotta serve all, the, all these people food, especially people in first class. But the world is frozen. You know, did they explain that? Did they have like gigantic hydroponic cars where they grow things? And why a train? Why does it have to be moving on these rails that were almost certainly snowbound anyway? You know, in reality, some snow drifts would come over it and the train wouldn't be able to move past them because they were just so big and deep and everything. You know, if if you were going to save people from this apocalyptic winter, why not why not just build like shelters, igloos, or you know, repurposed uh, warehouses or something? Why did, why did you have to be on this thing that was just moving all the time? And moving where? I mean, where are you going to go? Are you going to go where the rails take you? Is it going to be any warmer there? No, they weren't going to a place. They were just running around on this train.
I just have to say that, uh, you know, the, the social bits of it, the, you know, how the different classes interacted with each other. Yeah, it was, you know, it was sort of interesting because, you know, just reflected the kind of thing that would be happening. If you had resources and other people didn't, you know, so that was all kind of interesting and all, but, um, but why a train? Super Train probably had a better, you know, better reason for its existence. It was somebody who wanted to have this really big, cool old train, right? Where you could just go around on the tracks that somehow you, you were able to uh, build because of eminent domain or whatever, whatever they use to get the right of way. So here I am, I'm base coating the armor on what will be a bronze dragon. So as I do these dragon kin, you know, the blue and the red and the green and the black and the bronze, uh, the armor is going to be color coordinated, of course. So the, the blue dragon kin will have various and sundry blue tone armor. And the same for the red and the green. And this, this being the bronze dragon is going to have br bronze armor with gold embellishments. Um, just checking to see if I've missed any obvious places. I need, I need to decide what to do about what is obviously a fabric collar here. <laughs> right at the top of the neck. with the armor, you know, it's pretty straightforward. I can use different metallic colors, right? Like gold and bright brass and even copper. I could even throw some little copper embellishments on this in a few places. And I might just, you know, just to uh, make something look a little different. But with this fabric collar right around here, I don't want to paint it just uh, like brown, I don't think. Okay, well, if I miss some spots, I'll have to get them later. I've got these bags. The bags represent the same, present the same sort of issue as the collar, which is they're You know, they have to be within the, the bronze, brass. Oh, just back here, speaking of the bags. The bronze, brass kind of color scheme, right? Um, but maybe not metallic. I have to come up with a color that will work. I'm going to fret about the color, the, col the color of the collar right now. I'm just going to lie between the dark color of the armor and the slightly lighter metallic color of the skin. Let's see what I've got. Looking at my color chart here. You know, I could use something like that. It doesn't clash too terribly much. Um, I could use a leather brown, but I don't, I don't like the way that would look. I don't want to use copper. That would just jump out way too high, too, too much. Mm.
something like that's kind of got a little too much green in it, I think. I think I'm going to try that. I'm just going to see how that looks. Can't use it unless I find it. There. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll give this a go. Giving it a big stir. I haven't used this color very much. And then pigments kind of settle down inside the solvent. So the way this is going to work is that because I'm going to be painting the flesh part later, not the flesh, but the dragon skin, is I should be able to paint down using this little brush. You know, can, so if I get some of this paint onto where I'm going to be painting later, that's not a big problem. So I'm going to be pretty much painting down to the bronze from the top. Okay. And I'm going to put on my head magnifiers because I need the extra light and I also need to be able to see what I'm doing. So. see if I can keep it in focus. This camera needs to point a little bit more that way. Who knows if anybody will ever get around to doing that. I don't know. So um, we'll see if this color looks okay. It's kind of gross when it's fresh. It's the old, kind of mustardy yellow kind of color. But at least on the color chart, it ended up looking not too bad. Yeah, kind of. So I'm looking through these head magnifiers and this color is very, very obvious. So definitely needs, uh, needs to be painted. Sort of color of the fabric. I can always put like sort of metallic highlights on this a little bit later, maybe. And there's things I can probably do with this if I need to. Make it look a little less like matte.
under the sword here, of course. If I get it on the sword particularly, I don't, I don't need a lump of paint. But, um, yeah. So there, there is a spot there that needed to be pressed that wasn't. Yuck. I, just, I was doing okay and then I messed up there, so I'm going to have to do some brass touch-up on that. The line back here is kind of ragged. to pull the brass paint out to do some touching up here and along the front a little bit anyway and there's the demarcation line in the back here is a little bit mm, and you know I got some there so yeah I'll be doing that touch up with the with the bronze paint I'm going to let that dry and then we'll see how it looks. It says a color. A color color. What to do about those bags. You know, the belt. I'm just going to paint that belt black. Except for the buckle. I'll do that later. These bags just sure. I think dark gray or black would actually look good. But what I'm going to do is um, And in black. I'm gonna do light gray. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint the uh, the belt. You know, the bigger pouches dark gray, and I'm gonna paint these smaller pouches black. And then I can put um, for like the buckles or the belts. I can I can use gold or brass, maybe even you know something else like that to give them the theme of Yeah, if I'm not going to do these metallic, I just I just want them to be like a contrasting color. I think dark gray will be just will work fine. 
I'm using this, I'm painting on the, the inside, the belt and the inside of the buckle. I lighted later. I just want these to be kind of dark and then I can uh, put little embellishments on it with on the buckle and the, and the strap maybe. So the idea is just kind of to have a kind of a neutral colored contrast to the metallic um, armor. story. probably can't see anything but the top of my head, can you? I am sort of bracing everything to keep it from shaking and moving as I attempt to get paint onto it. buttons in our users. Ron's paint is really shiny metallic. It's got metal flakes all over it. It's very nice armor. I'm glad I used it for the armor and not the skin. Just because the metal flake is so obvious. belt come around the back there. Very close. As I predicted, when I look at this with my head magnifiers, I see the the unevenness of the of the paint that I had painted on. Yep, sorry for going quiet there. I'm just trying to, you know, paint little little bits of uh, color with a tiny little brush here and, you know, focus, focus. I hope the music is playing. I should probably look up and see. So as I continue to do this, I am looking at, uh, yeah, I'll be touching up the browns quite a bit when I do the, after I do the gold embellishments and get the gold paint on places where I want the bronze paint and 
I'm just sort of surprised that you know using a fairly big brush and trying to get it where I needed to that I missed so many spots. something that I have no idea how it's going to work or not. But I'm looking at this collar, okay, which is fairly prominent up here, is I'm going to try with the copper tiny little bits of um, like highlighting on it with the copper paint to make it look slightly but not completely metallic. I can't read the chat here. That was good. Thank you. Everybody, yeah. I'm kind of actually startled by the paucity of uh, train puns in the chat here. to jump out of the bottle in a major way so what I'm going to attempt to do here is get little bits of copper paint on here and I just want to highlight some of the like the raised portions I'll completely color it I just put a little metallic highlight on the edges the, the raised edges of the collar using this copper paint. Mm -hmm. And it worked okay in the front there. And then I apparently got too much paint on the brush. And now I've got a, like a bubble in the back of this copper color that I will have to fix later. looking okay. This kind of like a Oh, 
शर्म लगता है I wonder, wonder where that went. The brush, the model slipped, and the brush hit it somewhere. Hmm. So there's just a spot somewhere that I don't see very much. Yeah, I might do a little touching up around, like the back or something, a little later. Try to get the edges right. Anyway, I think it's okay. I just I'm gonna leave that. I'm gonna leave that be. Um, hmm. Try this on the belt buckle. We can always paint it a different color later. to be gilt or something later but we'll see um okay now i was going to paint the other two pouches black so i'm going to do that as i mentioned at the beginning of the stream i think i'm going to be ending early today probably just go to noon and part of it is because it's friday it's not like I don't have a bunch of stuff to paint, but I don't know. I'll see. I'll take a break at noon, and there's a little webinar I wanted to watch that um, starts at noon, so I'm going to start it and then see if it's any good or not. And if it is, then I'll come back down and let everybody know, and if it's not, then I'll come back down and I'll paint some more Dragonkin. That copper did not work on the belt buckle. This looks like it's going on very glossy, but it turns out to be pretty flat when it dries, which is good because I don't want these bags to be terribly glossy. It's just a shadow, okay. Looks like the paint got a little too far there. Just kind of ran a little bit.
Yeah, so we got some we got some touching up to do with this. In there too. Yeah, trying to fix the spot and then it goes over to the other side. Yep. That's how paint goes. But I can't touch up the gray until I touch up the uh, until the black dries. So we're gonna look we're gonna wait for that. That's gonna take just a little bit. Okay, um, I'm going to make an effort. We'll see how I do here. I'm painting some of the gold embellishment on like the shoulder, on the armor part, bits where there's a raised edge. Because I think it'll look pretty good if I can pull it off. That involves painting a very nice, fine, straight edge lines that... Uh, yeah, just a little bit of a challenge, right? What will make the armor look just a whole lot fancier. This, this is much lighter than the bronze. One of the reasons I picked the bronze is to um, potentially show off the highlighting. And I'm kind of hoping that this will end up looking also lighter, brighter than the brass skin or skin tone of the of the dragon kin. I'm going to paint this one and then see how it looks. There's another polished gold color which is even brighter. And if this doesn't show that well, I might get out the polished gold instead. really should show up against the bronze color really well, but I don't know that until after it dries, I guess. If it does show, it might be, this might turn out okay, we'll see. Oh. Yep. That's gonna turn out, uh, not good. Got way over, way over the edge. Brush slippage, I guess. I keep, I keep rediscovering all the time. There's a mismatch between the, uh, 
the skill level of the painter and the magnification of the head magnifiers. The head magnifiers do an excellent job of illuminating the limitations of the skill of the painter. Maybe it's a little more subtle than I was expecting. But I think I think the gold embellishment is working okay. Do it on this side too then. We'll be doing a fair amount of bronze touching up though. Well, because this is going going too far past the uh, past the embellishment line but really good use of uh, relaxing painting time it's going back and forth with different colors until it's until it's more or less okay adequate until it's more or less adequately, but you can see it just went too far there. Let's see if I can get it on the shoulder here under the sword. brush in the wrong direction blop but I can come back at it with the other with the bronze and you know and let's keep going back and forth until the line of demarcation looks okay but basically I just I put a blob of paint in the, in the wrong color there. That was not good. And I did the same thing here as I am attempting to paint some embellishments. Just highlighting some of the things in the back. And I managed to make that a mess. The belt buckle is definitely not looking good in copper. Okay, we have uh, edges around the shin guards as well. So that was poorly done. Some of this is going on okay. Parts of it are going on very poorly. Base coat is not even painted. I 
continue to experience the downside of head magnifiers. The downside being I can see what I'm doing. And most of this, most of my painting looks a whole lot better when it can't really be seen very well. painting around the rim of the knee guards here and down the ridge on the center. Another one of those just when it was going uh, okay not great but okay she just went right where it didn't really need to go Yeah, I think I, I'm going to do this too. I'm going to paint around the outside of this triangle thing here. Oop. Yep. The thing about painting to rather than from. I got it on the black bag. Even line on either side. Looks like there's actually some copper paint on there that I hit it with the brush. Oh yeah, I did. And I said, oh, I wonder where that went, because I bumped it. So when I had the copper paint out, that's where it went. <laughs> and there's another ridge on the side here.
Hope that's a dog playing and not in pain. Okay, and there's there's where I bumped it with the gold. This one turned out okay. This one did not. No, it's okay. I'm going to make this one bigger. So the one that was a mistake is the one that's going to be the way it is, and the other one will be painted to match. Okay, so if we look at this, except, you know, except for those spots that were, I well, just obviously made a mistake. Um, you know, the embellishments of the gold on the bronze actually look, they actually look okay. I think that's, I think that's pretty decent. I think that's pretty nice, pretty nice looking armor. And I'm going to let that just set for a bit. And just to let it dry some. And then I'm going to get out the, the bronze paint again. And there's just, there's just a lot of touch-up spots all over the place that need to be touched up. do that and then I might be pretty much done before the break. Need to let that dry. There's a just a spot of the gray there. That's bad. So I'm going to get the bronze out again. I'm going to start at the top, because that's the part I did first. You know, I'm doing some touching up with this, with this in a lot of spots. Including a couple that just never got painted in the first place. Some places where the gold went a little too far. I'm going to be doing some things that you can't see because they're tiny and too far away. I'll just talk about them as I go. There's this copper spot here. And just a couple places where the, the gold paint went too far. very quietly 
since I have nothing to talk about other than trying to get this paint in the right place, do touching up with the bronze paint. Touching up some spots where the gold went too far. Touching up some spots where the bronze would have never got on in the first place. Spots back here where it's really thin. Not the brush, best brush to be using for large touch-up spots like that one is, but it's the brush in my hand, so that's what's getting used. The line is a little too thick. This is the kind of thing where I know that I should just leave it alone. Like, okay, the way it is, it's adequate. Yes, the line is a little too wide. Just leave it alone. If you try to fix it, you're going to make a mess. But do I listen to myself? Do I go self? Haven't you ever learned your lesson? No, I haven't. So I do that anyway. going to just keep rotating this thing, looking at parts that are painted, areas that are just not even painted at all. I'm doing little touch-up bits. These, these legs it's just real tempting to like I've done this before with this kind of thing is to paint contrasting colors but I, I just think that that would be too much like it just wouldn't work that I should just leave this bronze leave the bronze well enough alone Just let the, the subtle gold highlights uh, do their job. You know, metallic against metallic. Kind of hard to tell where one leaves off and the other one starts and thinking that that's actually okay. That would be fine. So at this point, even if the bronze dragon wasn't bronze, I'm kind of, this is pretty nice bronzy armor, I think. This is going really nice and bronzy. And if I can get the skin color right, if it works okay, 
as I'm hoping it will, that it's kind of an intermediate, it's a lighter color than this, but darker than the gold embellishments. Especially if I'm able to successfully put some sort of wash on it. I think that will be all right. But the armor is turning out okay. I think, I think the you know the fanciness of it is subtle enough, but obvious enough that it's that it's working okay. So I need to do a little touch up of a little of the gray paint. This color, because I got a spot. Looking up in chat, just a second. Okay. Wizbot just said something that I couldn't see because these head magnifiers uh, magnify things about five inches away, but not much further. Uptime of the session is one hour and 47 minutes. That must be the last one. Okay, I'm going to clean this brush, at least make an effort to do so. And then uh, it's going to be break time. I'm going to take a break. And as I said, there's a webinar that I wanted to catch today. That was the only time I was playing. I suppose that it's probably going to get recorded. I could watch it later. But at the beginning of the break, I'm going to turn it on and see if it's worthwhile or not. And then I'll be back about 1230-ish, and I will let you know how the rest of this will go. And where'd my little... There's like four of these little plastic tubes that I keep saying... Be sure to put it back where you can easily find it. There it is. Okay. I bet our internet went down. The, the internet went down? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, but our that's why the Wizbot came up and said I'm offline because the internet went down. So, um, well, uh, we went abruptly to break, um, because our internet crashed and was kind of thinking, well, you know, it'll come back, right? Well, it didn't. So, um, this is what I did. I painted some armor on the bronze dragon kit and uh, got a little bit of work done on the base of the Odiog, but uh, we can't really stream anymore because the internet hasn't come back. So we're ending a little bit early today. Uh, thanks for joining, and we'll see you hopefully on Monday around 2-ish, from 10-ish until 2-ish. Thank you.